It's Stockholm Syndrome. What's Stockholm Syndrome? Uh, are you asking what thing is Soren describing as having the qualities of Stockholm Syndrome, or are you asking for the definition of Stockholm Syndrome? Neither. Impossible. The genie in Aladdin has Stockholm Syndrome. Impossible! <laughs> Genie has been trapped for, according to him, 10,000 years. 10,000 years! And in all that time, all he ever wants is his freedom. Itty bitty living space. And at the end of Aladdin, he gets it. And what does he do? Uh, make a bunch of stupid puns, probably. Dumb voices and dated references. Egregious product placement. He returns to Aladdin service. He travels the world for like a hot second, and then he goes right back to Agrabah and follows Aladdin around. And in Aladdin 3, King of Thieves, Dope flick. Aladdin and Jasmine get married, and he serves as Al's best man, and his wedding coordinator, and his decorator, and his valet parking attendant, and so on, additional items, I'm sure. But it just sounds like Genie and Aladdin have like a genuine friendship, like the kind I've read about in my books. You're not missing much. Friends? <laughs> really? I highly doubt the Genie's being compensated for any of that work. So that means that he's been craving freedom for like centuries, but he doesn't know how to embrace it. All he knows is to serve unconditionally, which he will do until the day that Aladdin dies. Wah. Solid counter. Oh, pardon me. Wah. You know, I was confused at first, but now her point makes a lot of sense. Soren, you're wrong. The genie is an immortal, all-powerful being. You will never get me to feel sorry for him. I mean, sure, he might fumble with his newfound freedom, but don't worry, because he's got infinity to figure out how to adjust. It's more anybody who isn't the genie that I'm worried about. Man, that includes us. Should I be worried? Daniel, are you worried? What? Yes, always. About it. Everything's terrible. Stop it. Okay, we know so much about so many Disney characters, and yet nowhere in the Aladdin trilogy do they talk about where the genie came from. He's just this all-powerful being that lives outside of time. Well, I'm sorry. That's just common knowledge. I thought he lived in, like, old-timey sand. Uh, funny f shoes, no television. Open vests, no shirt times. Based on their clothing and technological advancements, I would put the events of Aladdin in the 1300s. Oh, God damn you. But meanwhile, in the movie, they say that the genie's been trapped in the lamp for 10,000 years. Was that 10,000 years before the 14th century? Probably not, because he references Groucho Marx and Rodney Dangerfield. No substitutions, exchanges, or refunds. <laughs> I'm losing to a rug. So, Aladdin must actually take place in a distant future where everyone's forgotten how technology works. There was all of human history, right? Up to and including Rodney Dangerfield being a relevant pop culture touchstone. Then some shit went down over the course of 10,000 years that reverted everyone back to square one, where we ride on horseback. Markets boast fresh fish despite clearly being in a desert. Aladdin is set in a post-apocalyptic future like Blade Runner. Ooh, or revolution. Ew. Okay, that's one super dumb idea. Aladdin could take place in the 1300s, but the genie exists outside of time. That's why he knows about all of our modern pop culture and technology. I mean, everybody's riding elephants and camels, and the genie knows what cars are. Now, that's somebody that's seen and lived through the future. Okay, but well, that's just interesting. There's nothing dark about what you're saying. Then obviously you haven't seen the Aladdin cartoon show. I name dropped the second direct-to-VHS sequel to the Aladdin franchise seconds into this conversation. How could you possibly think that I am unfamiliar? It was a weekly Disney cartoon set after the Aladdin movies took place. It's a normal adventure show. You've got Aladdin, Iago, Jasmine, Abu, and the now free genie just having a different random issue every week. Kind of like your standard sitcom. I know! So? So that's proof that Agrabah, the city where all of these events are set, eventually gets destroyed and the genie knows and does nothing about because it. Because Agrabah is fictional. Is it? Was it? Do you? In the movie, the genie makes all sorts of pop culture references that are real, which means that the genie exists in our world. You know what doesn't exist in our world? Agrabah, or any historical evidence that it ever existed, which means that sometime between Aladdin and the present, Agrabah was completely wiped off the map. And instead of doing something about it, the genie just does an impression of Jack Nicholson. All right, Sparky, here's the deal. But by that logic, you should have stopped 9-11 and the Holocaust and the Taco Bell nacho wrap. You can't put everything on genie. All I'm saying is that the genie claims to be Aladdin's buddy, but he's really just biding his time until Aladdin dies. He's an immortal, constantly living every version of reality, just dicking around like some bored blue Dr. Manhattan. Damn it. I don't really exist. Oh, is that a thing? Can we talk about that? What if Katie is... Wrong. Yes, I love that. On board. Conversation adjourned. History is not 
an etch -a sketch where whole societies can just completely disappear without record, especially if the kingdoms are as big and ornate as Agrabah and as recent as the 1300s. So you're saying it never got wiped off the map. So you're saying Agrabah still exists today. So you're saying you're a crazy person. Zorn, you said that the genie was suffering from Stockholm Syndrome and forced himself into eternal servitude, but what if the opposite is true? He didn't have Stockholm Syndrome and somebody else forced him into servitude? That Soren didn't just say that? He suffered from Bonds Home Virtue Drone. I mean, what if he made everyone else his prisoners? Wilbert, you said it yourself. The genie has experienced our present culture, but there's no record of Agrabah in our history books. I submit that the genie, once freed, used his phenomenal cosmic powers to enchant the whole freaking world into forgetting that Agrabah ever existed so he could keep it to himself for all time. He preserved his pal Aladdin and his gal and their monkey and protected them safe from the events of history. Impossible for anyone from our world to find them. Uh, except for whoever wrote the screenplay for Aladdin, clearly. Presumably, Agrabah still exists in some bubble somewhere outside of space and time and Aladdin and Abu and Jasmine and Birdface, they're just going on adventures, all for the genie's entertainment, for eternity. Mint condition, still in the box, baby! Or it's payback, maybe. Like, uh, you trapped me in a lamp, humans? Did you rub my lamp? Did you wake me up? Well, guess what? I'm gonna trap all of you forever! King Kong ain't got shit on me! It's like the dark city of children's cartoons. You guys ever think that maybe we think about movies more than the people who made the movies? Yeah, like maybe we're projecting, yeah, I think Right, that. like that the guys who wrote Aladdin maybe wouldn't have if they knew a bunch of assholes were gonna sit around tearing all their choices well, apart? No matter what you make, some dickhead's gonna comment I'm on gonna it. I'm gonna stop making things forever now because of comments. Hey YouTube, thanks for watching. Make sure you Watch our other videos and subscribe if you want to find out, if you, not find out, if you want to tell us what the next episode should be about, write in the comments. Don't do that. We're not we going to actually do that. Do that. We wouldn't. The next episode's already You written. don't know what you're doing. We Has do. been shot. I mean, we, you we're have no power in this Professionals, we situation. know what we're doing. You are just, you're here to watch Thanks it. Thanks for watching.